Hello dear students, today I am going to deliver a lecture on the topic Geological Time Scale. Aims and objectives of this topic are to make the students know the meaning of geological time scale, to make students aware about the basic radiometric methods used in framing geological time scale, to know about various geological time capsules, to highlight important organisms which lived in various geological eras. Geological time scale is a time scale which shows the total time span since the origin of Earth to the present day. It has been divided into several durations and placed chronologically in a geological time table in which each duration includes its specific events. Construction of geological time scale was possible by the discovery of different radiometric methods which determine the age of the rocks and fossils accurately. A fossil is any evidence of the past life including remains, traces, imprints as well as life history artifacts. Geological time scale has been divided into six major eras. The eras have been subdivided into periods. The periods are divided into epochs and the epochs into ages. Different fossil types have been found in different strata of the earth. Different types of fossils reveal that the earth saw ups and downs in its life forms. Different types of rocks, namely sedimentary, igneous and metamorphic constitute the earth. Fossiliferous rocks are keepers and preservers of the fossils. Fossils reveal that some organisms originated in one age flourished for some time and then either became extinct or are still living to this date. Plants have also set blueprints in the form of their fossils which act as a window to see the past plant life on the geological time scale. Animals and plants have been living together on the earth since a number of eras. Geological time compares all organisms and their respective time periods during which they lived on the earth. The geological time scale embraces the history of the earth from its physical origin to the present day. A geological time scale is composed of standard stratigraphic divisions based on the rock sequences and is calibrated in years. The longest time period geologists use is called eon. Eons are divided into shorter time periods called eras and eras are divided into even smaller or shorter time intervals called periods. There are even shorter periods of time called epochs and ages. The first geological time scale was proposed in 1913 by the British geologist Arthur Holmes. Holmes estimated that earth was about 4 billion years old. Geologists have divided Earth's history into a series of time intervals. The Earth carries the history of the geological events in its rocks. Sedimentary rocks are gold mines of fossils. They have been formed by the sedimentation and solidification of mud and sand in layers at the bottom of water bodies. Nicole Citeno argued that rock layers or citrata are laid down in succession and that each represents a slice of time. It follows that the oldest layers are at the bottom and the youngest are at the top. With this understanding, geologists are able to determine the age of the rocks relative to one another. By assembling all these layers together, scientists have worked out what is known as stratigraphic column or record of the various ages of the rocks. This record spans 4.6 billion years of Earth's history. Dating the age of the rock is critical to reconstruction of Earth's history. Geologists lay on two basic methods of dating, absolute dating and relative dating. Absolute dating establishes how many years ago a given event took place. The most important method of absolute dating are based on the decay of naturally occurring radioactive elements. Relative dating 
places historical events in their correct order, but does not yield numerical estimates of how many years ago the event happened. Relative dating is important because only some types of rocks and fossils can be numerically dated. So all other evidences of ancient life must be related to age dated material by the techniques of relative dating. Now stratigraphy and the principles of relative dating. Relative dating falls under the subdiscipline of geology known as stratigraphy. Stratigraphy is the sinus of rock strata or layers. There are four fundamental principles of stratigraphy that form the foundation of our understanding of our Earth's history. First principle is the principle of original horizontality. When sediments are laid down on the Earth's surface, they form horizontal or nearly horizontal layers. The another principle is the principle of lateral continuity. It states that rock layers extend for some distance over Earth's surface from a few meters to hundreds of kilometers. Now the principle of superposition. According to this principle, as layers accumulate through time, older layers are buried beneath the younger layers. Now let us talk about the principle of faunal succession. This principle is based on the variation of fossils, namely actual remains, vitrifications, compressions, microfossils, incrustations, molds, costs and imprints of different organisms. William Smith stated that different rock layers contain particular types of fossilized flora and fauna and that these fossil forms succeed each other in a specific and predictable order that can be identified over wide distance. Thus a fossilized Neanderthal bone will never be found in the same stratum as a fossilized Megalosaurus because Neanderthal and Megalosaurus lived during different geological periods separated by many millions of years. This allows for citrata to be identified and dated by the fossils found within them. Now the Grand Canyon as an example of principle of stratigraphy. The Grand Canyon particularly exposes rocks spanning hundreds of millions of years of Earth's history. The oldest rocks in the Grand Canyon are exposed at the base of the gorge and are late Proterozoic. These rocks are overlain by younger Paleozoic age rocks. This is an example of superposition. Each major layer of sedimentary rock in the Grand Canyon contains different types of fossils. Absolute dating is the process of determining an approximate computed numerical age in the archaeology and geology. Relative dating provides only an order of events. Radiometric methods have been used for the age determination of rocks and fossils. Radiometric dating is based on the fact that the radioisotopes of certain elements decay at a constant rate and are converted into suitable elements. By calculating the rate of disintegration and the amount of product formed since the age crystallized that is formed, it is possible to calculate the date of rock formation. Following are some important radiometric methods which are used for age determination and hence for construction of geological time scale. Radiometric dating by uranium lead method. Uranium is found in rocks. 1% uranium becomes transformed into lead 206 in 66 million years. Age of rock is determined by calculating lead by uranium ratio. Radioactive argon method. It is used to determine age of the rocks older than 1 lakh years. Now carbon dating method. Carbon-14 is a radioactive carbon. It decays by a very weak beta decay to nitrogen-14 with a half-life of approximately 5730 years. After the organism dies, the amount of C14 is compared to the amount of C12 
the suitable form of carbon to demonstrate how much radiocarbon has decayed thereby dating the artifact in order to simplify the huge amount of geological information geologists have broken earth's history down into sections which are called geological eras periods and epochs fossil records have shown that life existed for about 3800 million years ago but complex life emerged only about 600 million years over the time life forms have changed a lot their fossil record allows the geologists to date and compare rocks across the geological time for example dinosaur fossils are only found during the mesozoic now the main time division is of geological time scale number 1 eon two or more geological eras form an eon which is the largest division of geological time lasting many hundreds of millions of years another is era two or more geological periods comprise an era which is hundreds of millions of years in duration another time scale is period the period is the basic unit of geological time in which a single type of rock system is formed lasting tens of millions of years now let us talk about epoch an epoch is a division of geological time period the smallest division of geological time lasting several millions of years sub division of periods into epochs can be done only for the most recent portion of the geological time scale this is because older rocks have been buried deeply intensely deformed and severely modified by long term earth processes as a result the history contained within these rocks cannot be clearly interpreted now age an age is a unit of geological time which is distinguished by some features like an ice age an age is shorter than an epoch usually lasting a few million years to about 100 million years earth's history has been divided into six major eras namely azoic archeozoic proterozoic paleozoic mesozoic and cenozoic era the azoic era is the oldest era and represents the crust formation of the earth during this era no life was present on the earth azoic archeozoic proterozoic are grouped together to form precambrian records of lime during precambrian is scanty the precambrian is characterized by the fact that life originated in this time and the oldest fossil so far recorded are about 3000 to 3500 million years old but such fossils are not distinct paleobotanists divide the geological history of earth into following two broad eons cryptozoic eon also called life of hidden time characterized by indistinguishable fossil record another one is phanerozoic eon or visible or evident life characterized by clear fossil record cryptozoic eon that is precambrian this eon constitutes about 5 fifths of the total geological time and is characterized by the appearance of life in the simplest form the total duration of this eon ranges from 500 to 570 million years the total geological time of the cryptozoic eon includes azoic era from 4700 to 3450 million years ago cretaceous or middle precambrian about 3400 50 to 2650 million years archeozoic or middle precambrian about 2650 to 1850 million years ago proterozoic or late precambrian about 1850 to 570 million years ago now phanerozoic eon on the basis of evolution of organisms and environmental changes this eon has been divided into three major eras which are paleozoic era it began about 570 million years ago the fossil life of this era is well preserved it has been divided into six periods and each period has been named after a place of region where the formation was first discovered 
द पीरियड्स ऑफ पैलोजिक एरा आर एज फॉलोज कैम्ब्रियन एंड नेम्ड फॉर द कैम्ब्रियन द रोमन नेम फॉर वेल्स ऑडोवेसियन नेम्ड आफ्टर ए ट्राइबल ग्रुप ऑफ नॉर्थ वेल्स सेल्यूरियन नेम्ड फॉर द सेल्यूरास एंड एंशंट ट्राइब ऑफ ब्रिटन नाउ डिवोनियन नेम्ड फॉर डिवन शेयर एपलेस इन इंग्लैंड अनदर इज कॉर्बोनी फेरस नेम्ड फॉर एबेंडेंट कोल बियरिंग रॉक्स इट इज डिवाइड फर्दर इन टू मेसिपियन एंड पेंसिल्वेनियन पीरियड्स नाउ परमियन पीरियड नेम्ड फॉर एन एंशंट किंगडम इन राइशिया नाउ लेट अस टॉक अबाउट मेसोजोइक एरा इट हैज बीन डिवाइडेड इनटू थ्री पीरियड्स नेमली ट्रायसिक पीरियड जुरासिक पीरियड एंड क्रिटेशियस पीरियड ट्रायसिक पीरियड नेम्ड आफ्टर थ्री फोल्ड डिविजन ऑफ बेड्स इनटू सैंड लाइम एंड मैरल जुरासिक पीरियड नेम्ड आफ्टर जूरा माउंटेन्स क्रिटेशियस पीरियड नेम्ड फॉर चॉक डिपॉजिट्स ऑन द बोथ साइड्स ऑफ द इंग्लिश चैनल Now Cenozoic era it is the most recent of the geological time scale which began only about 65 million years ago and continues up to the present in this era the continents have reached their present form and the climate became mild it has been divided into two periods tertiary period and quaternary period tertiary period has five epochs namely paleocene eocene oligocene miocene pliocene quaternary has been divided into two epochs pleistocene and recent now plant and animal life through geological time scale spectrum of organisms of different geological eras of earth are as follows first of all we will know about the precambrian life the first report of the life in precambrian belongs to the algae like organisms which were discovered by taylor from gunflecked formations in western ontario this chart shows 50 species belonging to blue green algae bacteria green algae and some fungi thus it has also been called age of blue green algae now paleozoic life abundance of algae resulted in the increase of oxygen this in turn resulted in ozone formation and made life possible on land all this paved way for the land invasion of plants during early silurian now cambrian two evolutionary events that mark this time are origin of eukaryotic organisms and the evolution of multicellularity it witnessed cambrian explosion which took place about 570 million years to 530 million years ago during this time period nearly all of the basic metazoan body plants that persist today were established the cambrian explosion is considered to be an exclusion because fossil record is very rich in cambrian now ordovician vegetation of this period was same as that of the cambrian except for some of the organisms which originated during this period cambrian and ordovician constitute the early paleozoic which is also known as the age of invertebrates now silurian This period showed the same vegetation as that of earlier two periods. It witnessed the origin of land vascular plants. Coxonia is regarded as the oldest vascular plant, having its origin about 420 million years ago. Arthropods invaded the land. Now Devonian. This period reported all plants except Angiosperms. Most of the early vascular plants, like Rhenia, originated in the Devonian period. trees like lycopods giant horse tails and ferns tetrapods gymnosperms progymnosperms and amphibians originated during this time both silurian and devonian periods are called the middle paleozoic because of the abundance of the algae and fishes this is also known as age of algae and fish now carboniferous the carboniferous period was marked by vast coal farming swamps the plant life included ferns and fern like trees giant horse tails called calamites club mosses or lycopods such as leptodendron and selgeria seed ferns and cordicellas or primitive cordates or primitive conifers land animals included primitive amphibians reptiles now permian 
Land masses of the southern and the northern hemisphere were separated by the Tethys Sea. Land during this time was covered by forests of seedless vascular plants. The widely distributed seed ferns, Globes of Terrace, which was apparently successful in resisting glacial conditions, was the most conspicuous development in the Permian flora. There was decline of lycopods, horse tails, and many marine invertebrates. Modern insects arose during this period. Both Carboniferous and Permian periods constitute late Paleozoic and is commonly known as Age of Amphibians and Ferns. Now, Permian mass extinction or massive loss of life. The Permian extinction, the worst extinction event in the Earth's history, is estimated to have wiped out more than 90% of all the marine species and 70% of land animals. It occurred about 251 million years ago. Some scientists think a series of volcanic eruptions pumped so much debris into the atmosphere that sun was blocked out, causing a significant drop in temperature and preventing plant photosynthesis, which in turn caused food chains to collapse. Now, Mesozoic Era or Era of Medieval Life. At the start of the Mesozoic Era, the continents of the Earth were jammed together into a supercontinent of Pangaea. Life recovered from the Permian extinction. While plant species had survived somewhat better than animals over the Permian extinction, new types of the plants developed to survive the changing conditions. Now, Mesozoic era has three periods Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. The Triassic period was dominated by gymnosperms and ferns. A decline in pterodophytes, pterodosperms, and amphibians was observed. The first dinosaurs and egg laying mammals originated in this time. Now, Jurassic period. This was the period of cycad, conifers, and dinosaurs. Due to the abundance of gymnosperms, this period is called a period of gymnosperms. Majority of the plant groups such as ferns, cycads, gingophyta, and conifers reached their maximum abundance. The first angiosperms also arose during this period along with toothed birds and marsupials. Now, let us talk about Cretaceous period. During this period, nature invented the flowers and the flowers bloomed for the first time. This period revealed more diverse flora. Cretaceous witnessed a decline of ferns and gymnosperms and rise and diversification of angiosperms. The oldest angiosperm leaf, Dictyophyllum, were recorded from this period. This period also witnessed typical angiosperm pollen, insect pollinated flowers, corpels, stamens, and other floral organs. Diatomous earth was formed in this period. Mesozoic pterodosperms became extinct in this period. A mass extinction ended the Mesozoic era. Another mass extinction occurred at the end of the Cretaceous period, bringing an end to the dinosaurs and the tropical forests. This extinction was due to the impact of an asteroid. The KT boundary is a geological signature. The boundary marks the end of the Mesozoic era and the beginning of the Cenozoic era and is associated with the Cretaceous tertiary extinction event, a mass extinction. Now, Cenozoic era. It means era of modern life or age of angiosperms and mammals. The last and the most recent of the geological eras is the Cenozoic era. New life came to refer to the mammals, thus coined the age of mammals. This new life could have just as early been angiosperms or flowering plants, the insects, the newest fish, teleostai, or modern birds, flowering plants, or angiosperms were widespread in the Cenozoic era. Cenozoic has two periods. Tertiary period. Angiosperms dominated the earth. Gingermanials made their appearance. Families like Gramnesi and Composite appeared. This period has been divided into five epochs as follows. Paleocene. The Paleocene epoch began after the extinction of the dinosaurs. At the beginning of the Paleocene, most mammals were tiny and rodent-like. With time, mammals grew into size, number, and diversity. The diversity of birds and other mammals and plants increased, and species became more specialized. Now, Eocene. The first grasses appeared in the Eocene epoch. The grazing mammals evolved the teeth, enabling a diet of harsh grass. A variety of trees thrived in warm Eocene climate, including beech, ulm, chestnut, magnolia, redwood, birch, and cedar, and more plants. 
The evolution of the plants was providing a powerful selective pressure across the entire animal kingdom and many new symbiotic systems appeared. Now the Oligocene. The Oligocene epoch extended from about 34 million to 23 million years ago. Angiosperms continued their expansion throughout the world, as did grasses. Superata forest was prominent, where the first ape primate belonging to the suborder Anthropoidea that include monkeys, apes, and humans also appeared. Now Miocene. The Miocene epoch extends from about 23 to 5 million years ago. The expansion of grasslands occurred as forests declined in the cooler and drier climates. Mammals such as wolves, horses, and deer, as well as birds, also generally evolved to closely resemble farmers' extent today. First man like apes appeared. Now, Paleocene. The Paleocene epoch extends from 5.3 million to 1.8 million years before present. These modern climates reduced tropical vegetation and shrank tropical forests to a band near the equator. Concurrently, deciduous and coniferous forests, tundra, grassland, dry savanna, and deserts filled the space. Now, quaternary period. This period witnessed glacial and interglacial periods which helped in the distribution of organisms in time and space. The quaternary period is divided into two epochs, Pleistocene. This epoch is characterized by the rise of man with social life. Another one is recent epoch. It is called as the age of man because of the development of modern man. The herbaceous plants spread rapidly in this epoch. Dear students, this was all about the geological time scale. Thank you.